Okay, gonna look at um, a problem that I put about in the first tutorial, and then uh, two other two other problems you'd probably be a bit more interested in. So this one was playing around with the idea of having three sections of shaft, <coughs> and then examining these in using maybe different cross-sectional areas or different Young's moduluses and so on. And looking at that behavior for determinate and indeterminate problems. <clears throat> so the easiest one to start with will be a, a determinate problem where we just apply a force between these two sections of the shaft here. I'm going to use the um, force of um, 1008 uh, kilonewtons. So quite a, quite a lot of uh, load in there. Using that number 1008 because it divides through by quite a lot of twos and threes and so on. Right, so uh, the, we're going to make this problem initially the easiest we can imagine, kind of redundant. <clears throat> so each section will have the same length. And we'll make them 100 millimeters in length. And the diameter. 50 millimeters in diameter. This will be my section one, two, and three. <clears throat> For the determinant the problem, um, I will have the uh, just uh, one reaction as it pushes against the wall, say, RA. To find things from going uh, left to right, so this is a, a positive force in the x direction. And how do you do these problems? Well, you make a cut through your bit of shaft, you make your internal force always point towards the cut, that's our F3, and you then look at one section or the other. Now it makes sense to look at this problem going from left, sorry, from right to left, <coughs> because the RA is an unknown. If I go from right to left, I'm always looking to the right of me, and I'm going to pick out things that are known. So when I apply summing up forces, go black. Summon up forces um, uh, for particular sections of diagram. Uh, I can't have lost my train of thought. Um, I will be picking out uh, known values as I go as I go through the section. So uh, the first section I'm looking at, which is my third section, I will see that I've got a minus F three. And no other forces in that particular bit there going on. Okay. <coughs> right. So, we're worrying, coughing a bit too much. Right. So, let's make a, another cut. Now, when I look at this section here, you notice that my F3s are balanced, so I simply ignore them. Or you can say to yourself there's no cut there. But now we can see that there's this 1008 kilonewtons. So the force equation will be minus F, ooh, I want to be black, minus F2. And this force is going right to left, so that's going to be another minus, minus 1008. 
I'm going to state the units until the end. So that equals zero. So therefore, we can see that we get F2 is minus 1008 kilonewtons. Uh, what I'm going to be interested in doing as a structural analysis is I'm interested in finding when I, this force has been applied, how much does this section of shaft move? That's, that's my question. So how much does that section move? What's the change in length for that section? So let's, uh, let's carry on. Uh, we'll do a cut through here, F1. We'll point out internal force at the cut. And we can see we've now got F1 minus 1008 equals zero. So you can say, again, all those sort of things there. So they, they cancel, they cancel. We've just got that 1008. So that's all we've got. So therefore, F1 is minus 1,008 kilonewtons. You notice that both F1 and F2 are negative forces. Because the bar is getting squashed, they should be in compression. That should be what we expect. <coughs> right. Do, do, do. What am I going to do next? Um, I could continue, but I don't need to. I could continue and find the uh, the reaction as well. So I could look at the whole bar and say that R A is going from left to right. <coughs> One thousand eight is going the other direction equals zero. So therefore, R A equals one thousand and eight kilonewtons and that's a positive. Um, the thing I'm going to do then is to work out the different changes in length of so the bar. So I'll use this formula from your formula sheet which is uh, F I L I over E I A I and we're going to sum up those particular sections that where the internal force experiences uh, the, where the section we're looking at experiences an internal force <coughs> and that will either get bigger or, or smaller in both cases they're going to get smaller so we notice that we're going to get a lot of common terms here so um, F1 will be minus 1008 Newtons the length of each bar is 100 millimeters. The modulus, so we're going to have this, uh, or we have that as 10 gigapascals. This one here, we'll double it, and uh, we'll make that 20 gigapascals. And this one here, <coughs> we'll double it again. And we'll make that 40 gigapascals. Okay. So for the first one, it's 10 gigapascals. It's area. We will use this diameter. So we're going to have pi d squared. Power 2 over 4. So notice that I'm... Um, using pi d squared divided by 4 as opposed to pi r squared. And then for the next one, F2 is minus 1008, same length. So it's um, Young's modulus is 20 times 10 to the 9. <coughs> it's um, diameter is the same. And we want to work that out. So we've got that's a common term, that's a common term, that's a common term, blah, 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 blah. So we'll work all them out and we will then take our 1 times 10 to the 9 
plus our 20 times 10 to the 9. So I'm doing 1 over that, 1 over that, plus those two things. And then we multiply it by the other terms here, so pi <coughs> one over four, so I'll put the four on top there. Right, so times by minus 1008, uh, times by 100, times by 4, divided by pi, divided by 50, minus 3 squared. So that gives me a compression of minus 7.7 7 millimeters. Right, so that's the problem. I said determinant problem. Now let's do it as if it was an indeterminate problem. <coughs> and what we'll do select all of this, hopefully. Oh, didn't know you could do that. We're going to put this in a kind of wall section such that the total length is 300 millimeters. So when I do my sum of how much this gets compressed, how much this gets compressed, and how much this gets stretched, which is the sum of the extensions and compressions, that should all come to zero. <clears throat> now, because you're setting this to be zero, um, you, can, you can multiply out common factors. Our A's can go, and our lengths can go. We've got different Young's moduluses. We are we are working in 10 gigapascals, 20 gigapascals, and 40 gigapascals. So we could just actually use the first number here. So 1, 10, 4. Again, because we're setting this to be equal to zero. Uh, we can multiply out our units, so so 10 gigapascals I'm multiplying out. So that we're going to use this equation, but before we do that, we need to find our internal forces. Now we've got another reaction here, is R B. So when I come to do this section now, I've now got an R B there. So I've got my F three still on the, on the R B. So we're going to have a minus F3 plus RB. Therefore, do the simple algebra before you move on. F3 equals RB. Now let's look at <coughs> this section. <coughs> so your F3s are, are cancelling out. So we're going to have minus F2. Uh, minus 1008, going to work in kilonewtons, plus RB equals zero. So F2 equals RB, take away 1008. And surprise, surprise, when we do this, we're going to have exactly the same thing as before, except for this will be for F1. So minus F1, minus 1008, plus RB equals zero. 
Therefore, F1 equals RB. Take away 1008. So I've got my three forces. We've got our equation. We're going to stick it in. Let's go for it. So we're going to stick it into this equation. So our F1. Even, we're going to do this even if we didn't really want to find what RB is. So the, uh, the reason for that is it is makes it easier just to plug in your forces, work out what RB, and then back substitute for your force. Okay. So your first equation, F1, is RB. Take away 1008. And I said the E here, it can all be scaled. So here we'll take this to be 1. So divide by 1. Okay, so we're taking 10 gigapascals. How many 10 gigapascals do I have? So that's just one of them there. Next one is F2. Um, purposely, I made this problem easy, almost redundant. And that's going to be 2. We've got 20 gigapascals, so 2 times 10 gigapascals. So that's going to be that. And then the final one. So that's the F3. So that'll be plus F3 divided by 4 equals 0. So you always want to try and get your equations looking like this. Nice simple algebra for FRB, sorry. That was a bit messy. Okie dokie, so let's rearrange this algebra, it just becomes an algebra problem. It looks like multiply everything by 4. So 4RB, four take away 1008, plus 2RB, take away 1008, plus RB equals 0. So you can see that we've ended up with 7RB. And here we've got 4 times 1008 plus 2 times 1008, and that's it. So therefore, RB equals 6 times 1008 divided by 7. So RB is... Six, eight, six, four uh, kilonewtons. So, in terms of how this uh, force has been distributed, a lot of the reactions actually come to this end here. Uh, this shaft is the difficult shaft to pull. It's got the, the high Young's modulus, so this is really sticking to the wall. And when we apply the force, the majority of the force is sort of traveling up to this section here and it doesn't want to be pulled away however what would that be about uh how much of a force got the other yeah so we've only got a reaction now of 144 in this section here so by having this other section this is where the majority of the force will be taken so that would be of interest perhaps structurally we are interested in the problem of how far this particular position will move from its initial location. So we, what we want to do is apply this, this equation here to sum up our uh, compressions and we'll find out how much this two bars of sh uh, shaft have shifted. Now we notice, of course, as probably a more sensible way of doing it would be to say, well, let's not look at how far those two bars are shifted been compressed. Let's look at how far this bar here has got longer. We're only going to do one calc then. So let's look at the change in length for F3. Let's put in our numbers. So F3 nicely equals RB. Young's modulus is 40 gigapascals. Uh, 
this area will be pi 50 times 10 to the minus 3 squared divided by 4 equals. So let's imagine the 4s on top. So we've got 4 times by 8, 6, 4, 0, 0, 0 times by 100 to the minus 3 divided by 40 times 10 to the 9 times by pi times by 50 <coughs> to the minus 3 and I need to square that and I've now got the answer to be 1.1 .1 millimeters now let's think about our answers before we move on um, uh, yeah. yeah, do you want to see the previous bit where I went wrong? Okay, so uh, here previously we had 7.7 7 millimeters. Now, by putting in an, a section here um, and making this section stick to the wall, it's only shifting by 1.1. So the first thing you notice is that uh, two things are going on. You could do sort of an analysis on this, really. So you could say, well, the first thing that's going on is that this reaction force is getting distributed to both sections. So it's getting distributed such that we've got the um, 864 is now uh, uh, making this section get uh, uh, get um, uh, pulled apart. And you can say that that um, this section is kind of experiencing the uh, whatever, it, whatever it was, the um, 140 odd Newton. So you could say that one thing that's happening is, is that your the force that you're applying is the reactions are um, are changing it. They're they're getting distributed at those forces there. So that's happening. The other thing. Is of course when you don't have this very stiff section, you could say, well, this section here, the first section, which has the lowest Young's modulus, that'd be the easiest one to squash. So, as a rough guesstimate, you could say, my 7.7, 7, uh, that's four times easier to squash than this section here, so divide that by 4 and you can see we're, we're relatively a fair bit off, 1.9 but that would be a very rough guesstimate of how far these things would uh, would be extended and, and again, you know, the fact that uh, the forces would get distributed could we make a guess on that? We could probably say maybe 70%-ish will get disputed in terms of the forces. So even if we could, uh, from our previous answer, we could make some uh, very straightforward um, guesses to guess what the answer would be. And my, my guess would be that it'd be a, around about 1.3 millimeters. And we found it to be actually 1.1 1 .1, uh, by thinking about those two things. The fact that we've got a section that's now um, four times harder to pull apart than it was previously to to squash it and also thinking about the fact that our forces are now going to get disputed um, at the position B and the position A in the bar so it's quite an interesting problem in that very very redundant simple problem you can start analyzing those sort of things and what I wanted to do with this problem was I wanted to look at maybe um, having the equivalent amount of area, maybe the equivalent amount of length, and, that, and those sort of things. So, um, for example, we could have a Young's modulus of 10, 10, 10 here, and we could then make this area four times as big, this area two times as big, and sort of compare those sort of different structures. That's where I was going to go with this this problem but I'm going to leave that this problem here for the moment